Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how you can host a WordPress website on your Synology NAS. So before we even get started, I just want to say that this is something that you can use for small to medium sized traffic, meaning that if you're getting a few hundred visitors per day, this is perfect. Now that's not to say that there aren't things that should be built on top of this. And the first and probably most important would be a content delivery network. We're going to look at that in a future video. So if you'd like to see that, please consider subscribing to the channel so you're notified when the video is actually launched. Real quick, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of the video. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to open up Synology's Package Center and you're going to install the WordPress package. Now as soon as you do that, it's going to prompt to let you know that a few different packages are going to be installed with WordPress. So select yes because these are dependencies to actually get WordPress working. You're then going to be prompted for a password for the MariaDB package. So MariaDB is what will be used for our database. So right here you're creating the root user for your database. As soon as you do that, you're going to be prompted to add the WordPress root user's password. The reason for this is because we're going to be using these credentials to create our WordPress database. At this screen, you can leave the database name and database user account as default, and you can create a database user password. This is the password that will be used to access the WordPress database. As soon as you do that, select apply and the WordPress package and all of the dependencies are now installed. Now that's not to say that we don't have to continue configuring it, but the actual packages are finished installing. So the next step is easy to do, but it's a little tricky as to why we have to do it. When you install WordPress, it's going to install using the URL that you're accessing it with. So if you were to go into Synology's Package Center and just click open on the WordPress package at this point, you will be brought to the WordPress installation page. But when it actually goes through and installs WordPress, it's going to install with the IP address of your Synology NAS. So as with most things, you can go back at a later time in WordPress and you can fix this. But I find it easier to just install WordPress using the domain name that I will be using to access the site at a later time. To do this, we have two real options. If you're using a DNS server, you can go in and you can create a new DNS record for the IP address of your Synology NAS and the domain name you'll be using to access this site. So for me, I'm going to use dev.wondertech.net. And if I have a DNS server, what I would do is I'd go and I'd create a new record for dev.wondertech.net with the IP address of my Synology NAS. If you don't have a DNS server, that's fine. You'll have to update the host record on the device that you're currently using so that it points that IP address of your Synology NAS to that domain name that you'll be using. In the written instructions, I have three different links that will show you how to do it on Windows 10, Mac OS X, and Ubuntu. As soon as you do either of those, you can go back to the Synology packages and you can open the WordPress package. At that point, we're going to change the IP address to be our domain name. As long as you created the DNS record or updated the host file correctly, you should be accessing the same page. So pick your language and then enter the site title, username, password, and your email address. If you don't want search engines to actually crawl this website, you can check off the discourage search engines from indexing this site button. I will be doing that because this will be a development site, but you probably want search engines to crawl your website. As soon as that's done, you can select install WordPress and it will go through and it will finish installing WordPress. So at this point, we've installed WordPress and we're able to access it using our domain name. Now you probably want to go through and actually design and develop your site at this point. I always find it better to do everything offline, meaning that I haven't opened it up to the external internet yet. So I go through, I set up the website the way I want it to be set up, and then I move on to the next step, which is creating a virtual host. Now the virtual host is what's going to allow your website to be accessed outside of your network. So first make sure that you install the WebStation package from Synology's Package Center, and then you can go ahead and open it and select virtual host. You can create a new record here, and then you're going to enter your host name and use port 80 slash 443. Now, if you don't want to use ports 80 and 443, you can change it here, but I'm assuming the majority of people want to use those. In the document root, you're going to find the WordPress folder, and then you can modify the HTTPS settings. Set the HTTP backend server to be Apache HTTP Server 2.2. Make sure the default profile is selected for PHP, and you can select OK. If you get a message letting you know that the HTTP group requires read permission, you can select Yes there. The final thing we're going to do here is we're going to select PHP settings. We're going to edit our default profile. You're going to scroll down and you're going to enable the MySQL I extension. This just allows WordPress to access your database. So one final configuration change that we're going to make is we're going to go into our uh, WordPress admin section and we're going to go to our settings and we're going to delete the slash WordPress at the end of our site address. 
The reason for this is because we set up our virtual host to go directly to the WordPress folder. So your site should be designed and developed at this point, and now you can move on to actually exposing this website to the external internet. So there's a few things that you'll need at this point. You'll need to have your domain purchased, and you'll have to have a DNS record created with a CNAME record that points back to your DDNS host name. So to summarize what I just said, if that's confusing, you're basically pointing your domain back to your external IP address. If you have a static IP address, you don't have to create a CNAME record. You can create an A record with just your external IP address. But for the majority of people, you have dynamic IP addresses, so you'll need to create a CNAME record and point it back to your DDNS hostname. If you don't have DDNS set up, I have a video on how you can set it up using DuckDNS, but if you set up Synology's DDNS server as well, that's fine. You basically just need a way to be able to access your external IP address by a hostname. So at this point, you've gone through, you've either created your A record with your uh, external IP address, or you've created a C name record with your DDNS hostname, and your domain name is pointing back to your external IP address. At this point, you can go ahead and you can port forward ports 80 and 443 on your router to your IP address of your Synology NAS. This is opening up these ports to allow external traffic. Now, I'm not showing a video of this because there's a ton of different routers and there's a ton of different ways of doing this. In the written instructions, I have a link that will show you how to port forward on various routers. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Synology firewall and we're gonna create two firewall rules one for port 80 and one for port 443. This just allows traffic on those ports. Now, if you don't have Synology's firewall set up, especially if you're hosting a website on it, I highly suggest that you set it up. I have a video explaining everything about Synology's firewall and how you can set it up, so I'll leave a pop-up for that now. So our firewall rules are now created, and since our ports are forwarded on a router, we can access our website from outside of our network. The final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Let's Encrypt certificate. So open up the control panel, select security, and then select certificate. Add a new certificate, and then get a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Enter in your domain name and your email address, and then you can select apply. This is gonna get our certificate from Let's Encrypt, which will then allow us to configure our web server to actually use that certificate. As soon as you get the certificate, select configure, and then you're gonna see your domain name there. Select your Let's Encrypt certificate, and then you can select okay. At this point, SSL is fully set up for your website. The last thing that you wanna do, and this isn't mandatory, but what you can do is go in and delete either that, uh, the host record or the DNS record that you created in an earlier step. That record was created so you could access your WordPress website using your domain name. But since your website is exposed externally now, you don't need that. So this was a fairly straightforward, but also complex tutorial because we're configuring a lot of different moving pieces but at this point, you should be able to access your website externally. So like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're just starting a new website, this is a great way to host it because you don't have to pay any cloud hosting fees. And while the performance isn't gonna be spectacular, you probably don't need that type of performance yet. So for me, I actually started my website, wondertech.net, using my Synology NAS. And I had very, very low traffic early on, but I slowly built it up and I transitioned to a point where it's now hosted in the cloud. So there's no right or wrong time as far as transitioning from your NAS to the cloud or to a different server goes. I made the decision for uptime purposes. I didn't want my website to go down if I lost power or if I lost internet, so I switched to a cloud provider. So while the site is now set up, we are definitely gonna be enhancing this in the future by using a CDN. So please consider subscribing to the channel if this helped you out or if you wanna see more videos like this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I always do my best to get back to you guys. And if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Thanks, guys.